uh, we found out a little bit earlier today, and uh, we've got via Skype all the way from London the player agent for uh, Dimitri Katrakilis, and that's none other than Tom Beatty, who knows Tobani very well. I think uh, the two boys got up to a lot of mischief when uh, Bobes was in Newcastle. We're not going to ask about that, though, Tommy, and thanks very much for joining us on TMO. Just very quickly, um, you must be quite excited about uh, the move your, your players made. I'm, uh, well, I'm more excited about a night out with Bobes, possibly, in the future. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> mate, he's, he led me astray, to be honest. But there's part of that, as you say. Let's move on to uh, important business. Yeah, no, um, fantastic, isn't it? I mean, yep. you know, he's at a fantastic club at the moment, um, Dimitri. Montpellier, uh, great club, coached very well by Jake White, who, of course, is going to be moving on, as we know, at the end of the season. So he'll be wanting to finish on a, on a high. And, um, you know, they... With what, what Dimitri wants to do now that he's signed uh, with Harlequins and will be joining uh, a great club in, in England, uh, you know, a lot of history there, uh, July the 1st next year, he wants to finish on a high with uh, Montpellier. It's a big, big focus. He, 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 need, he wants to repay the faith of Jake White, who, who took him there, and also Mr. Altrad, uh, the owner, who, um, you know, uh, Dimitri has so much respect for Mr. Altrad, and uh, that's the priority for him. Uh, obviously, he's an ambitious guy. Uh, he wants to win trophies, and whether that be in France, whether that be be in England, obviously from from next year. Yeah. But also, uh, you know, he really uh, still has that desire to, to pull on the, the green jersey. Tomo, we don't have too much time, sadly, on the show because we've got so much to, to get through. But there seems to be, yeah. uh, obviously, uh, we know what uh, South African rugby players um, are, have certainly been taken up by teams in the Northern Hemisphere. But what is it about South yeah. African rugby players in the North that seems to be so highly valued? Well, look, I actually think this is quite a groundbreaking move. And not just saying that because uh, I was part of the move, but, you know, it's almost going to, uh, you know, possibly have a sh enter into a shift into the transfer market. What I mean by that is, you know, many South African players have obviously over the years moved to France, including Dimitri. Um, and, and, you know, with, with Louis Pickamols, uh, the French player, French international eight, moving to, to England this year, to Northampton, yeah. from a big club in Toulouse. Now we've got Dimitri moving next summer uh, to, to Harlequins, as we know now. Now, look, that is a big shift because what it shows is that the English premiership is, is up there now in terms of market value of, uh, and being able to offer players that opportunity to, uh, in terms of the, the way they're remunerated, uh, which is com competing with the, uh, the French market. And, you know, it'd be interesting to see if there's more box. Uh, I believe Evan Etzebeth might be on his way to, uh, to England. That's yeah. uh, what I'm hearing. Yeah, to Saracens, I believe. Bobs? Just, Tom, um, in terms of the players and what kind of securities do they get in terms of when they sign for a team or when they go to Europe, um, the player image rights and trying to explain that and even what makes a player to qualify to play over there. Does he have to play a test match? Does he have to have study involved yeah. or all of that? Just to explain to the, to the viewer and to the players. Well, Bobes, I mean, you know yourself, you played at Newcastle Falcons and, uh, you know, you got over there, I guess, with your visa because you played for the box. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, if you represent the box, if you start uh, for the box, uh, say, in the last 15 months, uh, it has to be a starting cap. You can qualify through that route. Uh, Dimitri, for example, or, or the Greek, uh, is sometimes he's known, <laughs> yeah. um, has that Cypriot passport. So uh, that's key, obviously, at the moment. Obviously, we're going through the whole Brexit thing, but uh, an EU player does get in uh, to qualify for the visa to play in the, the Viva Premiership, uh, and indeed, they are a few championships below that. So, um, yeah, there's different ways. I mean, obviously, if you're perhaps a, you know, a spouse or visa as well can get you in, um, and a little bit more complicated than France in that sense, but, uh, you know... Uh, I believe the cream, the cream always, uh, you know, rises to the top. And, and, and in terms of what Dimitri can offer, um, you know, he's definitely part of that cream. Well, it's certainly interesting. We will, I'm sure, uh, Tomo. Uh, but before I let you go, what's, what's I, got a question? I do for have you? a quick question for you, Tom. Um, there's there's a lot of importance, of course, placed, especially as the players get older, for them to make sure that you get them into good clubs, that they're remunerated well. Yeah. But what happens now? after the fact how much emphasis is put on what happens to the player or how they can make money and make a living after their career 
Oh, absolutely. And it's a big, big emphasis of mine. I'm not just saying that. I, it really is. I had a meeting earlier today, actually, uh, discussing this point, which is, is very key for me. And, and that's the reason I'm a player manager is, you know, I've been very lucky that I've been brought up around professional sport, professional mm -hmm. rugby in particular, uh, for many years now. And, and I've seen a lot of players, unfortunately, um, you know, left at the end of their careers and, and not really having um, any other career to go into. And, and, it, and it's quite sad. And you hear about the stories of, of depression, etc. Yeah. And, and, and it's, you know, yeah. it, it is a, a, a thing that you know, I feel that I, I, I need to be responsible to, to help mm. guys um, so that uh, post career, you know, that there is those opportunities to, to go into another walk of life. Because I think that professional sportsmen, rugby players in particular, have a huge amount to offer uh, the business world because yeah. of um, you know that team ethic, that drive uh, that they have in the sporting environment, is quite unique. And I think um, you know they can add a lot of value to a business. And uh, so you know, it's key for me to to assist them on that aspect. Right, well, uh, Tom Beattie, thank you so much for joining us on TMO. Uh, we'll certainly be in touch with you, and uh, I'm pretty sure the play exodus will continue from South Africa, and uh, I'm pretty sure one of the players um, that will be leaving these shores will be coming past your books. So thanks very much uh, for that, and uh, all the best to you, and all the best to the Greek. Yeah, all the best, guys. Have a good one. Thank you. Cheers, and that's uh, Tom Beattie joining us uh, via Skype from London, and it's uh, a pretty big story. And uh, Dimitri Katrakilis, he's not uh, certainly been in the consciousness, but I just wonder when we're so thin at 10 knots, if he's not one who might just be considered for a 